Today we're talking about feature flagging in .NET, which is a way to control how you release your features to production. And I'm going to show you how I'm using feature flags on my website to run split testing so that I can optimize my conversions. So let's dive in. First, we're going to start by adding support for feature flagging in our .NET Web API. To do that, I need to install a NuGet package and here's the one that you're going to need. I'm going to look for feature and here's the Microsoft Feature Management NuGet package. This library is going to allow us to install the required services for working with feature management in a .NET application. So let's go ahead and install it. So I'm going to install this library and head over back to my program class. So the next thing I need to do is to configure my feature management services. How you do that is by saying builder services add feature management and this is everything that I need to do to enable feature flagging. Now the next thing is where am I going to define my feature flags? Well by default it's going to look for the feature flags in my application settings configuration so let's go ahead and define a section inside of my app settings development JSON that I will call feature flags. And inside of it, I'm going to define my individual feature flag values. The first feature flag I want to define is clip article content. Feature flags are Boolean values, so they are like a switch. They are either turned on or turned off. So let's say that by default, this feature flag is going to be turned on. So I'm going to assign it the value of true. I'm going to show you how we're going to use this feature flag in a moment, but I also need to apply an additional piece of configuration to make this work because I'm using the feature flags section. By default, the library will look for my feature flags inside of the feature management section. So I need to adjust the configuration slightly. I'm going to say builder configuration get section and let's call it feature flags. And now I can start working with the feature flags in my code. So let's go to the features folder and I'm going to add a static class in the root of this folder, which I will call feature flags. Let's make this class static and it's just going to contain the names of my individual feature flags. And the first flag that I have is, let me just copy the name from my app settings JSON file. So it's called clip article content. And we're going to give it the same name, which is going to match the value in our configuration file. So now let's see how we're going to use this feature flag. So I'm going to head over to the get article feature and inside of the handler, for this feature, I want to check if the feature flag is enabled and introduce a different behavior. So how you can do that is by injecting an I feature manager instance. It's available in the Microsoft feature management namespace and you can use it to check the state of your feature flag. So what will happen is after I fetch the article from the database and confirm that it's not null, I want to check if my feature flag is enabled. So I'm going to say if await feature manager is enabled async and I'm going to use my feature flags static class to access the clip article content feature. So if this feature is enabled, then what I want to do is say article response content and I want to clip the value of this content to whatever I say is the new feature. So let's say that I want to allow only the first 30 characters. So we're going to do something like this. Article response content and let's say length. If it's less than 30, then I'm just going to return the original value. So let's return article response content. Otherwise, I'm going to return article response content and I'm going to take the first 30 characters and I'm going to format this slightly differently. So let's say like this, we first grab the first 30 characters and I'm going to place three dots. And this is how our feature is going to work. So if this feature flag is enabled and the length of the article's content is more than 30 characters, then we're going to clip it in a sort of a preview. So let me show you how this feature flag is working. Let's start by creating a new article that I will use for running our feature flag test. And I'm going to replace the content with something like this. And I'll make sure that the content of this article has more than 30 characters. So let's create this article. I'm going to send this request and we get back the ID of the newly created article. Then I'm going to use it in the get request to try to fetch this article from the backend and let's see what's going to happen. So we hit the breakpoint inside of our handler for the get article query. And first we're going to fetch the article from the database. 
Then we're going to do the null check. And here's the part that we are interested in. We're going to check if our feature flag is enabled. And you can see that this evaluates to true. And we're going to clip the value of this content to be at most 30 characters long. So if I return this response to Swagger, here's what we're going to get. You'll see that the content of this article contains the first 30 characters and then three dots. So we know that our feature flag is working. And the best part about this is that if I want to switch this feature off, I can just go to my feature flags configuration section, set the value of this feature flag to false. And then I just need to restart my application and the feature flag will be turned off. So if I start the application again, and we send the same request to the API to fetch this article, only this time the feature flag is turned off and let's see what's going to happen. So in this case, the content will be provided as it is in the database and it won't be clipped because we switched the feature flag off. So you can see how easy it is to work with feature flags in .NET. All you have to do is set Boolean values in your application settings and then check if they are enabled or not in the code. So why is this useful? Well, first of all, you can decouple your deployments from your releases. You can develop new features hidden behind the feature flag and safely deploy them to production. And when you are ready to test them, you can turn the feature flags on and test the new feature in isolation. And the real value with this approach is that if you run into a bug in production, you don't need to do a rollback of your deployment. You just go ahead and turn off your feature flag and your application will continue to run normally. Of course, this assumes that you have the discipline to develop your features to have two versions in the same time. So you want the old version to continue functioning and also the new version to be able to work alongside it. And then you can switch between these two using a feature flag. Let me show you one more example of what you can do with feature flags. I'm going to head over to my feature flags section and I'm going to add one more feature flag. So this flag is called show article preview and we're going to use it to expose a new field in our article response, which is going to be the preview. I'm going to leave the clip article content feature flag turned off. And for the show article preview feature flags, I'm going to use a percentage rollout. This allows me to configure this feature flag to be turned on 50% of the time and turn off the remaining 50% of the time. So this is useful if I want to do split testing of a specific feature, or I want to do a gradual rollout of this feature to a given percentage of my users. For example, I would start by rolling out the feature to five to 10% of my users, checking how my system is behaving, and then increasing the rollout percentage until I'm fully satisfied that the system is stable and that this feature can continue working in production. Before we can use this feature flag, we need to do a few more things. Back in our feature flag configuration, we need to add a feature filter and we're looking for the percentage filter. We need to enable this for the percentage filtering on the feature flag to work correctly. And I also need to define the value of my feature flag in my future flag constants. So I'm going to say public const string show article preview, and it will have the same value. So let's update the get article feature to work with this new feature flag. What I'm going to do is add a new field to the article response, which I will call preview. So this will be the preview of my content and it's going to be nullable if the feature flag is turned off, it's going to return null. Back in the handler for the get article query, I'm going to do this. So let's use the same approach here where I am clipping the content of the article, except I'm going to use this value for the preview. So I'm going to say if await feature manager is enabled async and I'll use my feature flags static class to check if show article preview is turned on. Then I'm going to copy what I had previously and let's just replace this with preview. So in this case, I'm setting the preview of the article to be what we had previously when we were clipping the article content. And I'm going to remove this check completely so that this is all that we are left with. So let's see how this feature flag is working because it's going to be turned on or off 50% of the time. I'm sending a get request to my API and let's see what response we are going to get back. 
So in this case, you can see that the preview of the article is present in my response and it has the first 30 characters of my content. If I send this request again, we're going to get back null because this time the feature flag was turned off and if I send the request a couple of more times, you're going to see how the preview value in the response is changing as the feature flag is being turned on or off. This is a really awesome feature when working with feature flags, except this is unfortunately very random. The same user will see different behavior on each subsequent request to your API, and this isn't something that you want. A more realistic case is that whenever somebody sees a feature flag value, be it either turned on or off, this value would be cached for that user's session. So this is much more useful because then the user will see the same behavior throughout their session. So just something to keep in mind if you actually want to try this out. And now I'm going to show you how I'm using feature flags on my website to run split testing. We're going to switch to Visual Studio Code for this part of the video and I'm going to show you how I'm using feature flags to run split testing on my website. So I'm using a service called PostHog, which gives me access to feature flags that I can use to run my tests. And how I'm going to check for a value of the feature flag is by using the use feature flag enabled function from the PostHog.js library. And what I can do with it is go into my component. This is a React component written in TypeScript, but I'm actually using Next.js as the framework for my website. So what I need to do here is add a constant and let's call it feature enabled. And then I can say use feature flag enabled. So I'm just calling this function and I need to pass it the feature flag value that I want to check. So let's call the feature flag, for example, header copy v2. And if this feature flag is enabled, I want to change something on my website. So here's what I'm going to do. This div element here is the main text on the home page of my website. So I want to change this based on the feature flag state. And I'm going to say if the feature flag is enabled, then you're going to give me one version of this text. Otherwise, you're going to give me the original version. So this is the default version that I currently have. And let's just change something slightly in the new version when the feature flag is enabled. So I'm just going to change this to say, take your .NET and software architecture to the next level. So now I can run my website by saying npm run dev, and it's going to be started on the localhost 3000 address. So let's head over there. And here's how the website looks with the feature flag turned off. That's because I didn't define the feature flag yet. And I'm going to head over to PostHog, which is the service that I'm using to manage my feature flags. And I can say new feature flag. I'm going to give it the key of header copy v2. It's going to be turned on by default. And I can decide the rollout percentage of how many users are going to see this feature flag. So let's set this to 100%. All of the users are going to see that this feature flag is enabled. So when I save this and let's go back to feature flags, you're going to see that this feature flag is enabled. If I head back to my website and I just hit refresh, you're going to see that the section has been updated to the version that we set when the feature flag is turned on. So now it says take your .NET and software architecture to the next level. How I would run the split test is in the feature flag configuration, I can update this rollout percentage to be 50%. So let's update this to 50. And then half of the users are going to see the old version and half of the users are going to see the new version. So if I refresh this, we'll see which variant we got. So we have the new version of the copy in the header. And then what I can do is compare the number of users who subscribe to my newsletter based on the version of the website that they are seeing. And that helps me decide which version of the copy helps me achieve a higher conversion rate. And if I'm unhappy with this experiment at any point, I can just head back to my feature flags and disable it and everyone is going to see the old version on the website. So if we head back to my website and I hit refresh, we're going to see the old version because the feature flag was turned off. Notice that I didn't have to do any changes in my code. I'm only changing the feature flag values from the post hoc website. And while you're here, you might as well go to my actual website, maybe see if I'm running my split test on you and definitely while you're there, subscribe to the newsletter to improve your .NET and software architecture skills. If you enjoyed this video about feature flagging, then make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to my channel, and until next time, stay awesome.